Good evening, everyone. Time for another member update. Now, this is the five minute chart of silver and the euro US dollar cross. And I've drawn some arrows here at some significant points of interest. Now, if you remember a couple days ago, we had this very strange rally in silver. We we ran from about 1660 all the way up to about 1715, uh, almost a 50 cent run. And it was promptly reversed. And that was fascinating to watch. I really was wondering when it was happening live, I was watching it live, thinking, well, is this going to be it? Nope, that wasn't it. Now, what happened today was even more interesting. Uh, now, if you look here, you can see that right on the heels of that silver rally, we got a breakdown of the euro, and then subsequently we got a breakdown in silver. Now today what happened was we had a very big move in the euro, and of course the euro is going to be the biggest anti-dollar proxy that you can have, except for the precious metals, which are suppressed, so they don't operate that way. So we're, we want to watch the euro and the Japanese yen, but primarily the euro to see if dollar weakness is going to come in and is that going to translate to metals prices rising. Well, as you can see here, the cartel did the exact opposite. Whereas a few days ago, we had silver rallying and the euro dropping. Today, we have the euro rallying and silver dropping. And you can see it's no coincidence they were timed exactly together. It was right as the market opened, 8.30 a.m. The euro went right up and silver went right down. So there's only one thing that that means, and that means it's time to shop. So we're going to look at uh, what we're shopping for now. But uh, let's look at the Japanese yen, and we'll pull out a little bit farther, say, to the 30-minute, because... It's still weakening. Now, the, the weakness in the yen has been tremendous. Back when they said that the yen would hit 120, everybody was like, you've, you've got to be crazy. How could the yen get back to 120? You actually have to get all the way back to the monthly to see it. A pretty wild move. but um, And there's some very interesting points here. If you zoom in on the chart, let me get the line thing out of here. I'm sorry, let me get the arrow out of here. And I'm going to show you here some very interesting things on the chart. Now, this date right here, this date here is actually Fukushima. And what happened with Fukushima was that the yen started to strengthen initially. My thinking was, well, they're going to have to sell their treasuries and the dollar is going to crash. Well, it turns out the exact opposite happened. Whatever Fukushima was, and I will say I definitely do not know. I have serious doubts about the nuclear story. I have serious doubts about the entire story. I don't know. I don't know about the weather modification conspiracies, the underwater nuclear bombs, all that stuff is stuff I don't have any idea about. But I can tell you by looking at the market here that the result was we had a correction down and then right as soon as the election happened, you can see that when Barack Obama was re-elected president, that was it. From that point on, the yen has weakened, and it has weakened significantly. We're talking 76 to 124. We're talking the yen is approaching losing almost 50% of its value, which is an incredible move in a currency. Let's get over and look at the indices and the Chinese SSE composite. I put a chart on the member site to show you how the media always runs stories when the Chinese stock market is going down. That was the story I posted when we had this. They never run stories when the Chinese stock market is going up. So they had a huge story about the largest crash in however many years you can see here that the Chinese stock market is almost back to new highs. Again, I fully expect it to run to 10, 20, 30, 40, 50,000, a long, long ways from here. But I just wanted to point that out to show you that the U.S. press is 
significantly biased against news from China. Um, I, I've covered the GDP stories. They're absolutely ridiculous. Uh, China's run, still running 7 plus percent GDP on a trade surplus. So they're absolutely crushing us economically and they continue to do so. We also know they're accumulating all the gold and perhaps the silver as well. We just don't know. So let's get to the main story of the night. There's some other stuff I want to talk about. First of all, I want to talk about our stock market here. Now it's kind of interesting that Sheila Bear, this is the former head of the SEC, is calling, basically calling for a bear market. You've seen how closely, if if you haven't watched the latest roundtable or well, interview between Peter Schiff and Mike Maloney, it's on the blog, you can find it, it's very interesting. One of the charts they show uh, correlates the QE program and the stock market rise, and they're, they're practically a one-for-one one correlation. But today, we have Sheila Bear coming out and saying the time has come to raise interest rates. Now, she's no longer in the government. She's taken a position with, the, uh, with a college, but it's interesting. Uh, are they going to pull the trigger? Will this be the black swan? There's going to be a black swan. And uh, let's take a look at this article from Zero Hedge. And this is about that, uh, a much bigger threat to our national debt. This is from Bill Bonner. And uh, this is a black swan uh, event possibly coming. Now, here they list, uh, I, don't, I can't vouch for their accuracy on black swans and, and whether they call them or not. But they, they give a list here of five major events. The collapse of the Soviet Union, which you could say no one really saw coming. The fall of the Japanese miracle in 1990, and we know that since 1990, once the Japanese stock market topped, that that uh, economy has not recovered. We're talking about it's now um, 25 years later, and they're still in a recession, basically. They have not recovered. They have refused to liquidate the bad debts. Uh, number three is the bursting of the dot-com bubble in 2000. And 2001, the attack on the World Trade Center, and then 2008, the financial crisis. Of course, you know, we've talked about the Shemitah, the seven-year cycle. Don't know the validity of that. But let's look at uh, Bonner's take on this, how we will get hyperinflation from here. How did we do it? Our customers pay us to notice things that others are paid not to notice. Bear market crashes, crashes, credit contractions, governmental, technical, and societal catastrophes. Nobody wants to look carefully for these things. Nobody wants them to happen. They make people poor, not rich, and yet they do happen. It seems part of nature's system that mistakes are punished, errors are corrected, and bad things happen from time to time. But like forest fires, they have a useful purpose. They clear away the dead wood and allow future growth. Now that, that's true if it's allowed to happen, which it hasn't happened. And that's a actually a good analogy because if you know in California uh, they did for a number of years they uh, didn't clear away the dead wood and they didn't allow the fires to burn and then what happens is you get a catastrophic fire because the dead wood builds up and that's what's coming with this next black swan. Currently we are predicting a credit crisis much worse than the 2008 meltdown no one wants it, especially not the Deadwood, but we put a high probability factor on this forecast. It is unavoidable, even if we don't know exactly what form it will take. And we believe it will be foreshadowed by something even rarer and more unexpected, the disappearance of cash dollars. Just to be clear, our prediction is that the ice age of low rates and low growth for a long time, as predicted by many analysts, and economists won't happen. Instead, a crisis will cause a crash on Wall Street, the banks will go broke, the credit system will seize up, people will line up at ATMs to get cash, and the cash will quickly run out. This will provoke the authorities to go full central bank retard. They will flood the system with money of all sorts. The ice will melt into a tidal wave of hyperinflation. Now that's their take. You're all aware that we've been debating this issue for at least 15 years of what form this collapse is going to take. Uh, that 
that prognosis is probably as good as any. Now, let's look at something else here. This is the Chicago pension crisis. And this is one of the first ones. Of course, Detroit had one. It was kind of quieted. It wasn't really big in the news, but we know they took a big haircut. This one is different because what's happened in Chicago is, I'll take you here to the Illinois Constitution. You can see here, this is Section 5 of the Illinois Constitution. This was written into their Constitution, by the way, by a constitutional convention in 1970. And this is what it states, membership in any pension or retirement system of the state, any unit of local government or school district, or any agency or instrumentality thereof shall be an enforceable contractual relationship, the benefits of which shall not be diminished or impaired. So you can see that the citizens of the state of Illinois or their legislators, if they really represent them, put it into their constitution that pensions will be paid. Now, if you think about that, that is something that should never be in a constitution. A constitution should protect the rights of people. But you do not have a right to someone else's money. And that's essentially what this does. Because what this says is that they cannot diminish the pension benefits that are promised no matter what. And if that means going and taking all of the wealth of the private citizens who don't work for the government and giving that money to the citizens who do work for the government, that's what they will do. Now, this is a big story. This is one we want to watch. And uh, another big uh, crisis here was when Moody's cut the debt to junk. Uh, I'll read it here. We spent quite a bit of time recently discussing the fiscal crises facing many state and local governments across the U.S. There are quite a few explanations for the deteriorating financial situation, ranging from falling oil prices to outright fiscal mismanagement. And by the way, it's beyond fiscal mismanagement. These pensions to this day, even in the zero interest rate environment that we're in, are still projecting 7 to 8% yearly returns on assets. What are they investing it in? Can you imagine what's going to happen when the stock market crashes, if that's what happens, if they, if they allow the spare market to take hold? Uh, we're talking about negative returns. This pension situation, uh, this could be the black swan we're looking for. One persistent theme is grossly underfunded pension liabilities. The most dramatic example of this problem is Chicago, whose debt was cut to junk by Moody's after an Illinois Supreme Court decision struck down a pension reform bid, complicating Mayor Rahm Emanuel's efforts to push through similar legislation in Chicago, where we've shown the budget gap is set to triple over three years thanks to rising pension liabilities. So this is a big, this is the elephant in the room here, and it's written into their constitution. Now, there are Republicans in the state who are proposing a constitutional amendment even if that happens, the time frame for the reform to happen, we're talking years. So that's, that's a big threat. Now, I wanted to look at some investments that we can make, and specifically silver. I wanted to tell you that I can't give investment advice. You know that. I've told you that on multiple videos that we're not in the business of giving investment advice. What I do is tell you that what I am doing at the present time and what I am doing right now, most of you know that I had to uh, visit a dying relative and we're probably going to be receiving some inheritance now and we're going to have to make a decision as well as having left my job and taken my pension, my retirement and all these other things, having to deal with the decisions about what to do with the money. And so at this point in time, it's my feeling that we are very, very close to um, ground zero with this crisis. And so I am in full on crisis mode, basically trying to uh, exit the system. And the alternatives I'm looking at are, of course, physical silver, uh, maybe looking at some physical gold and cryptocurrencies and 
than building a cash position outside of the banking system, which essentially is stuffing money into the mattress. So let me show you the silver play that I'm looking at right now. The chart seems to indicate that they want to take silver lower, even though the euro is showing strength and the dollar is going down. Uh, they're taking silver lower and that gives us an opportunity to stack more silver We're right here at 1650 an unbelievable bargain now i've told you before about the status of the perth mint lunar series that's my favorite of all and it's just not available the only available coins are going to be the half ounce goats at about 1250 and then the one ounce goats are around 27 28 the two ounce goats we can still get them for about 45 so the two ounce is going to be the pick there. I'm looking for something else to buy. And this is the coin that I'm looking at right now. It's the Somali elephant coin. And I thought I had this here on Atmex. I guess I closed the window. Uh, but you can get these on Atmex right now. The 2015, you can get it for about 1950. I think they have about 800 left. I brought it up on my eBay to show you that the prices of these coins they do hold up uh, we can go down here and see some previous years again these are sold prices these are coins that actually sold here's a 2008 wildlife series that sold for 114 dollars uh, remember the black is an ask but the green is actually a sale here's the 2015 so here's the 2013 that's going for 31 bucks uh, here's a 2014 that went for 19 bucks. So you can't say that is 100% consistent. But if you look at the general trend, these coins seem to hold up. Here's a 2011. We have a number of those. 35 bucks for a coin. Uh, 2009, $72. What that coin went for. Here's a 2010, $70. That was on May 26. Someone bought that coin for $69.90 and $2.95 shipping. And there's another one that went. So this is gonna be my second pick here because it seems to hold up very, very well. The demand seems to be high. I don't think, there's a 2004 that went for 150 bucks. Another 2008 that went for 115. So this is gonna be my favorite right now at the present time. Again, as I said, in my mind, I'm looking at crisis mode. I'm looking at imminent black swan. And the priority is to get every asset aligned into either physical metals or cash in the mattress or cryptocurrencies. Now, let me look at the cryptocurrencies real quick here. I want to show you what I do with the cryptocurrencies. Uh, this is a coin that I'm in right now. This is called Lotto Coin. It happens to be at the top of a lot of these. You can see if you want to look at 24 hour volume on these coins, uh, I, I use Cripsy, but you can use the other exchanges. If we go into the Cripsy exchange, you can see uh, here are coins listed by uh, let's see, uh, 24 hour volume. So you can see Lotto Coin is here. Uh, there's Dogecoin, Dash, Ripple, Litecoin, Bitcoin, and Lotto Coin. And you can see that this coin traded. It's it's traded nine thousand five hundred dollars so far today. Now I got into this coin around one, and started buying more around two, and have added. I'm starting to liquidate when I have like a threefold or so gain, trying to roll it into other coins. So. Uh, let me just show you briefly. Now, this is the wallet. So one of the things I do when I'm looking for a cryptocurrency, the first thing I do once I look at the chart and the chart looks good to me, the chart has to look good. One of the best charts is a chart that's breaking into new highs. So I started buying this as it was breaking out of, through the two, but it backed off and I bought, you can see the volume here, bought it at one. So my average price is about one to two here on this coin. Now, when you find one of these coins, the first thing you want to do is download the wallet. Now you can see here that I've got about 7 million or so coins in my wallet. Uh, the next thing you want to do is you want to take that wallet, 
well, actually, I'm sorry. The first thing you want to do is you want to encrypt the wallet. And you can do that. They're almost all the same. You hit encrypt wallet and you put a passphrase on it. And that means even if your computer is hacked, they get into your computer and control your computer. They can't send any coins from that wallet without having the password that you have to that wallet. Of course, you memorize that. Don't write it down anywhere. The next thing that you do is you back up the wallet and you go in and save your wallet.dat somewhere else. And what I'm doing with a number of these coins is I am pulling these coins off of Cripsy and putting them in the wallet because I've lost in the past by leaving my, my coins on the exchange. And what has happened to me is that I have found that the exchange went into question and then I couldn't get my coins off. Now, I am actually running into this issue right now with this coin. And that was one of the things that clued me into it was I tried to pull some of the coins off that I had purchased and Cripsy, I requested 5 million coins and they only sent me 300,000. Now that really raised a lot of red flags to me. That told me I need to start selling them off or I need to start uh, getting them off the exchange, which I couldn't do, or I need to watch the price to see if there's gonna be a rise. So I detected a shortage in this coin. I don't know why there's a shortage in the coin, but uh, I, I may have to exit the coin. I would like to get the coin in, in the wallet though. Uh, the Florin coins that I purchased, projecting that this Alexandria Library technology will be very promising. That coin has doubled basically from where I started buying it, but I have taken all my coins off of the exchange and I'm holding them in a locked wallet. If I want to sell some, I'll just transfer them back up to the exchange and uh, sell them there because it's not safe to keep your coins on the exchange. So that's what I'm doing right now. I personally believe that we are very, very close. I can't tell you how close, but very, very close to some type of endgame scenario. And the three assets that I'm looking at trying to divide up my wealth between is going to be physical silver and a little physical gold, cryptocurrencies, and then cash under the mattress because the black swan is, is coming really soon, I believe. And we'll talk to you next time.